which is how that content can now be used to create a, a richer experience. In this instance, it's in what I think would be accepted now as the dominant professional um, social networking site, LinkedIn, uh, which many of you are almost certainly members of, even if your Facebook membership may have lapsed over the last few years. And I'd like to invite to the stage Daniel Roth, who's going to talk to us about how LinkedIn and using content to make it a richer experience. Thank you. It's great being in here. I was told before this to slow down. I'm such a New Yorker that I was talking to a PR person before. She said, you've got to slow down. But I think you're all hungry, so you probably want me to talk fast. I'll, I'll go somewhere in the middle. I'm Dan Roth. I'm the executive editor of LinkedIn. Um, for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you, maybe, maybe less. I'm going to talk to you about the mistakes people are making and the lessons to be learned from harnessing the power of conversations out of content. It's a lot of what Matt was talking about. At LinkedIn, I work on all of our original content and aggregated content, so I'm constantly swimming within the professional conversation. I spent my career as a journalist. I was a reporter at Forbes. I was a senior writer and editor at Fortune and Wired. Helped start a magazine at Condé Nast called Portfolio. And I was the editor of Fortune.com before joining LinkedIn. Um, but the story I want to talk to you about and share with you today is really is not one that I've ever signed or wrote myself, it's one that the marketer wrote. It's a woman named Beth Comstock. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Beth. She's the CMO of GE. Beth uh, will share a story at one point about uh, the best advice she'd ever gotten. She was the head of PR at NBC, and she was incredibly efficient. Beth was someone who never left to do undone. She would go into meetings, she would listen to what everyone was saying, she would walk out of there with a list of of, uh, of requirements and who was going to do them all. At the end of the day, everything was checked off. Incredibly efficient. Beth got shit done. Beth was promoted. She was in the uh, CMO of GE, and one day she was talking to her new boss, Jack Welch, on the phone. She and Jack are having a nice conversation. Suddenly, Jack hangs up the phone, or the phone goes dead. So Beth picks up the phone again, she calls back, and she gets Jack's assistant. She says, The, the line went dead, I don't know what happened. Jack's assistant says, Oh, the line didn't go dead. Jack hung up on him. He wanted you to know what it felt like to be in a meeting with you. And Beth had this aha or you know, light bulb, I guess it's probably more appropriate for GE, uh, moment above her head where she realized that, that what Jack was telling her was that she was too abrupt, that she was getting stuff done, but that wasn't what people wanted. As Jack Welch explained it to her, you've got to listen to what the context is. What do people mean when they tell you what's going on? What are they, what are they trying to get at? What's driving them? He, the way he put it was, you have to wallow in it. So, you know, I love this story for two reasons. Number one, she wrote it on LinkedIn as part of our influencer program, which I'll explain in a second. Number two, I think it talks about how you play in the content game today. You have to be willing to allow people to start a conversation but not know where they're going to go. You can't begin the conversation, you can't have content that you are pretty sure exactly what, is, what you're going to get out of it. So I don't have to tell any of you that content is now an immensely valuable currency for brands, for marketers, for individuals. It's a powerful tool for any business that's looking to shape itself or to become a thought leader. And I know many of you know this because you're spending so much money on this. You know, we, uh, I think the last report I saw showed that branded content was about 39% of marketing spend today. And there's incredibly high profile examples of people doing it right from Red Bull to American Express, Citibank. And they've demonstrated just how much reach and awareness branded content can have on the global stage. But content isn't easy. And in an era where we increasingly believe that data gives us all the answers that we need, that questions that you've had can be answered by just harnessing the right data, um, you know, content doesn't play in that game really well. Content is messy. You have to, you, have to, you don't know what's going to happen. You're not ever quite sure what's going to work. And in fact, the best content, you're not sure what's going to work. You have to be prepared for people to put their own spin on it. You have to be prepared for outcomes to be out of your control. And you're creating a conversation. That's what matters. That's the currency. Only brand, only now, I think, are brands and executives really learning to harness this power. And those who do learn how to harness it best are going to be the ones who stand to have transformations in their business. So I'll tell you why an editor from LinkedIn is talking about this. You know, more and more of the B2B or professional conversations actually happening on LinkedIn. Uh, we've got, uh, next year is, is the 10th anniversary of LinkedIn. 
years. So this wasn't always the case. For our first eight years, we were really about one thing and doing one thing incredibly well, which was connecting you to your network. We wanted you to know who it is that you knew and to find them on LinkedIn and to be able to use them to get your next job or to set up meetings or whatever it is you need. In the last two years, we've layered on something else, which is the idea of connecting professionals with the insights that matter to them. What are the stories, ideas, information, inspirations that they can use to be better at what they do or what they want to do? And that's what I focus on personally at LinkedIn. So I'll walk you through two of the major ways we do this. The first is LinkedIn today. I don't know if any of you have seen the, this button on, it's on about 1.2 million publisher sites. This powers an incredible algorithm at LinkedIn. So everything that we do in content land at LinkedIn is really a, a mix of man and machine. That's the way that we like to put it. Um, the machine part looks a little like this. When you click on this button after reading an article or before reading an article, it fuels an algorithm. The algorithm looks to see why people are sharing this content. We sniff out signals that professionals are giving us because they're logged into LinkedIn and they've told us a lot about who they are. Every time someone clicks on it to share a piece of content, we look to see who's doing it, try to understand what it means and who else could benefit by it. So for instance, if a banker is sharing a story from AdMage and it stands out from what the normal news algorithm thinks is, the news algorithm thinks is a normal rate, It'll do some other computations and try to decide whether that's a story that should be put in front of all bankers. Now imagine slicing that up for every skill, job title, uh, years of business, etc. We aren't looking just for the wisdom of the crowd, we're looking for the wisdom of your crowd. Now the human part takes that filter I just explained and breaks it. We have a team of editors who are spread around the world who look for unusual stories, who look for things that are trending on other networks. You try to see what's trending in one particular area, thanks to the algorithm, and share it with everybody. The editors stay on top of breaking news, they stay on top of anything where you need a specialized skill versus the raw power of the algorithm. And the result is a news product that tells you what you need to know, when you need to know it. It's the kind of thing that we want you to start your day on LinkedIn and finish your day on LinkedIn. When the Today Firehose points at particular stories, the know the crash servers, recently we absolutely shut down the Chronicle of Philanthropy, which they were thrilled about. And we sent things you skyrocketing to other places. Now LinkedIn today has been, become a powerful way to find out what's buzzing in the professional world and what's buzzing in your world, more importantly. The natural evolution was to take all of this information we had learned and start creating our own content. And that's what we did in October when we launched the Influencer Program. With Influencer, we set out to take some of the top thought leaders in business, have them start sharing directly on LinkedIn. We want to know what they see every day, what they've learned in their years, what they are hearing throughout the day, and where they think the world is going. On LinkedIn, you can always listen to the insights of your own network. You always can hear what people are saying that you're connected to. What we wanted to do was to have you hear the things that people you might never get a chance to meet are saying and to learn from and use it to your own benefit. So we went after the top names in business like Richard Branson, Arianna Huffington. We launched this in October, so it was right before the uh, U.S. presidential elections. We got Romney and Obama, which was a uh, very fun experience because we had to get one in order to get the, to get the other. So at the exact same time, we were chasing him. We got one. We told Obama we got Romney. Obama came up. That actually turns out to work with a lot of CEOs. Um, and we also deliberately went after people who were well-respected in their specific fields, marketing, uh, media, technology, telecom, banking, uh, venture capital, all kinds of different areas. So today we have just under 300 influencers. It's an invite only program. We're adding about five a week. We have people ranging from the CEO of Schubert Packard to the head of the European Parliament. We'll get there in a second. They write hundreds of posts each week, with each generating 100 comments on average and multiples of that in terms of likes and social shares. And they're doing so because context matters. When Ben Whitman wanted to explain where she was taking HP, for example, she did so on LinkedIn. So she wrote a post saying, here is where HP is going to go. And she did it because when people come to LinkedIn, they're coming for a professional context. They are there to learn about the business world. She also did it because she could reach almost everyone at HP by writing. She could reach almost every one of HP's partners. She could reach most of HP's investors by coming on LinkedIn. People come to LinkedIn for business, and that's what she was talking about. It's where the world's professionals gather. 
Many of the people who have done this, the influencer program, have more followers now on LinkedIn than they have on other social networks. And some have no presence on social networks. This is their first time coming in. So the president of the head of the World Bank, Jim Kim, is a great example. No social presence at all. Came on the LinkedIn and he did so because he knew that he was going to have an experience of people reading and commenting on his articles who would be there just to help him further his cause, which is ending poverty. The feedback that the professional world has given them on LinkedIn is really phenomenal. Uh, I think this video uh, that I mistakenly played a second ago will have to help explain it a little better. Started by people just sharing the link and saying, What do you think about this? 
If your content isn't doing this, if it isn't starting conversations, I think you're doing it wrong. It has to live beyond the content. We've come to understand that the journey of a story or piece of content doesn't end when it reaches that person whom our algorithms or our editors think that it's appropriate for. That's just the start. It needs to get catapulted on. It needs someone to say, you know, hey, this is me. I'm going to add to this. Let's, uh, let's start talking. The idea that uh, the value of content increases the more it shares is an old one. You've all gone to parties and, and run through the things to talk about. You know, you, you, you finish talking about where you're from or what you do. And next you want to talk about something else. You need to say, hey, did you see that article in the, uh, on the BBC site? Did you watch this program? Did you see this incredible ad? The content helps start the conversation. It's the icebreaker. I have an uncle, this is a uh, crazy story, but I have an uncle who's, who's kind of a hoarder. And he subscribes to five newspapers. He subscribes to, hundreds, to, to, to tens of, uh, of dozens of magazines. And he collects them and never throws them away. So when you walk into his house, you get, there are stacks of papers and magazines up to, your, up to your waist. And he goes through each one of them, and he doesn't throw them away until he's clipped out articles and thinks are relevant. And he sends them to his family and friends, so I'll get packages in the mail with articles from 1996 that he thinks are relevant to me. So he's working his way through this chronologically. And he's doing it because he wants to start a conversation. What we've realized is that in the digital age, people like my Uncle Larry can do it a lot more efficiently. Everyone talks about the idea of things going viral. You have to have content. You can't just force things to go viral. It's incredible content on its own will go viral if it's done right, if there's something that people can get out of it and they want to make it go viral. <clears throat> I think the mistake that people make is assuming that the piece of content being shared isn't ready until it's complete. That you have to make sure you tie a nice bow on. I did this when I was a writer. You, know, you would sweat every single word, every single paragraph. You get to the end and you have a kicker that ties everything together in a beautiful way. You can see other people doing it with content too. You can't ship it until it's absolutely complete. I think this is an outmoded way of thinking. You need to get something out there that is, the more raw it is almost, the more people will react to it. They like feeling like they're seeing something very authentic and they want to have the ending to it. The content creators aren't, the, aren't, aren't, the, aren't creating the ending. Your readers, your commenters, the people, your, your, your audience is the one who decides what the ending actually is. There's a famous quote in Lawrence of Arabia, you know, it is written, it is done, complete. But what you're doing is just starting the conversation. It's why when we measure success and influence, we don't look only at pages. We look at pages, we love pages. But what we really look at are comments. Richard Branson, to go back to Branson, wrote a piece uh, that generated 250,000 pages. 6,700 likes, 3,000 tweets, and 3,700 comments. It was a piece that was 200 words, and it was called, How, What's the Best Measure of Success? Happiness. It was a riff on what's going on in Bhutan, about how he measures success, and I want to just ask the question, how do you measure success personally? And the network lit up. There were 18 comments for every word that Branson wrote. And what they were sharing was their own experiences. They were using Branson's question as an icebreaker to explain how they view the professional world, how the professional world links with their, with, their, uh, with their personal world as well. So this happens at an incredible pace on LinkedIn for a particular reason. There's no such thing as a LinkedIn troll. No one is anonymous on LinkedIn. Everything that people write or share on LinkedIn goes back to their professional identity. So it is a, you know, I, I, in the US we talk about, and maybe this happens everywhere, your personal, your, your uh, your uh, permanent record. You know, if you're in school and you get in trouble and the teachers say this is going to go on your permanent record. LinkedIn is your permanent record professionally. When people share, when they comment, they're actually having everything that they see is seen by their bosses, by their employees, by future business partners, by current business partners. And people don't run away scared by that. In fact, they use it to shape their identity. In common, people are sticking their necks way out. They showcase their knowledge and expertise in a far more meaningful way than just sharing their link and in a way that's inherently connected to their professional reputation. And when someone does this, there's an inevitable snowball effect. When you see someone else comment, you're more willing, you're more willing to comment. If you see something, and if you see someone that has no comments, you're less willing to comment on it. It's why if you see a piece of content today, it feels almost naked if there aren't any comments or shares around it. You have to build that kind of a viral aspect to it, or so the social impact that any content you have uh, has, that any kind of Content you've created is happening so that other people will comment on it. Huge minor shift for professional writers, but an even bigger one for brands and marketers when it comes to how to approach content on social platforms. 
If you want your content to realize its fullest potential, increasing its reach beyond its original distribution list is incredibly important. You need to establish your position, you need to share your views, but you do so in a way that encourages others to do the same. And that is really what creative content is all about today. You don't want to let people just check off the box, to just share it and not add something to it. You don't want people just to say they read it or they saw it. You want people to add to it. You want, them, you want your content to take on a life of its own. You want, in the words of Jack Welch, for people to wallow in it. Thank you for having me. I'll see you guys at lunch. I think it's a...